G4C, Interference with Consumer Electronics, Grounding, and DSP. Which of the following might be useful in reducing RF interference to audio frequency devices? Using bypass capacitors, as you see in the graphic here, uh, could be useful in doing that. You'll remember that capacitors uh, conduct radio frequencies more easily than lower audio frequencies. And so if there are undesired radio frequencies happening on your, uh, in your audio circuit by uh, putting uh, capacitors across here to short out the radio frequencies, uh, that would tend to remove them from your audio frequency circuits. Which of the following could be a cause of interference covering a wide range of frequencies? A wide range of frequencies is the key to this, and the answer is arcing at a poor electrical connection, because arcing or sparking will produce very broadband noise. And uh, uh, so the wide range of frequencies here is the key to this question, arcing at a poor electrical connection. What sound is heard from an audio device or telephone if there is interference from a nearby single sideband phone transmitter? So if you have an audio device of some kind that's acting as a receiver with single sideband, you're going to hear distorted speech, kind of Donald Ducky sort of speech. What's the effect on an audio device or telephone system if there's interference from a nearby CW transmitter? You'll remember CW is uh, turning the carrier, the radio frequency carrier, off and on to make the Morse code. And in that case, your interference will be a humming or a clicking sound in your audio device. What might be the problem if you receive an RF burn when touching your equipment while transmitting, transmitting on an HF band, assuming the equipment is connected to a ground rod? And the system could be that the ground wire has a high impedance on that frequency. It may be that your ground wire is long enough to be resonant uh, on the frequency that you're using and is no longer an effective ground. Uh, you need to keep your grounding wires as short as possible. I've had this actually happen to me where my ground wire was too long uh, going to the ground. What's one good way to avoid unwanted effects of stray RF energy in an amateur station? And the correct answer is to connect all the equipment grounds together. And here you see an effectively uh, connected ground system. Um, here you have the ground bus, which is a copper plate. You have your various antenna switches, which are uh, connected onto that copper plate, uh, and that uh, serves as an effective ground for them. And then here you see ground braids that are going out to the ground system. And uh, there will be other grounds coming off if you're going to the various pieces of equipment, to the antenna tuner, to the, uh, to the transceiver, and so on. Uh, the essential point here is that you go to a single point with all of your grounds. You don't connect the transmitter to the antenna tuner, then to the, the ground uh, plate. You connect the transmitter to the ground plate. You connect the antenna tuner to the ground plate. And all of your, all of your system grounds attach to the, the same point, to the same uh, plate. Which of the following would reduce radio frequency interference caused by common mode current in an, on an audio cable? Which would reduce radio frequency interference? Uh, this is a very common practice to put an, a, radio, a ferrite bead around the cable. And they come in several forms. These are available from Radio Shack and so on. And you can see here, this one's just in a plastic case that you can open up and put the audio cable through it, either one pass through it, or in this case, he's made two passes through it and snap it back together, and it snaps that ferrite bead around that audio cable, which will then strip the radio frequency uh, uh, energy off of the cable. Uh, these are very common. Here you see one molded into a computer cable, and all those lumps on your various computer cables, that's what those are, is ferrite beads to cut down uh, RF interference.
how can a ground loop be avoided? Uh, connecting all the ground conductors to a single point is how you can uh, avoid a ground loop. And here you see that same picture as before that has all of these uh, ground connections coming to a single point. What could be a system of a ground loop somewhere in your system? If you receive port, uh, reports of hum or distortion on your station's transmitted signal, that could be an indication that you don't have an ineffective ground. Uh, your, your ground is not effective and uh, that uh, it's causing problems with your transmitted signal. You receive reports of hum uh, or other kind of distortion on your station's transmitted signal. Which of the following is one used for a digital signal processor in an amateur station? Uh, we talked about digital signal processing before. Uh, they've stuck it in this one again for some reason. It's to remove noise from received signal. We've seen several ways of doing it. Uh, tonight we've seen using the notch to take out an unwanted signal uh, or uh, shifting the IF passband to uh, remove uh, unwanted noise. The other thing that we've seen is uh, uh, making the uh, bandwidth narrower uh, to cut out uh, uh, noise also. So that's one use for digital signal processors to remove noise from received signals. Which of the following is an advantage of a receiver digital signal processor IF filter as compared to an analog filter? Uh, since you're using digital processing, uh, you can create a wide range of filter bandwidths and shapes. And basically, all you're doing is changing the math that's going on in your filter by the various filter settings. And uh, that, that uh, uh, changes the characteristics of the filter. Which of the following can perform automatic notching of interfering, uh, interfering carriers? And that is a digital signal processor filter, automatic notching. <clears throat> 